Mr. Chair, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks. That request is covered by General Leave. Mr. Chair, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Chair, I rise in support of my amendment designated as Amendment 10 to H.R. 140, the Protecting Speech from Government Interference Act. Mr. Chair, I sincerely hope that after H.R. 140 is enacted, there are zero violations of the bill's new anti-censorship requirements. However, if any violation or allegations of violations do occur, then the public has a right to know. My amendment is simple. It states that it is the sense of Congress that inspectors general should publicly report the number of complaints and tips received, the number of investigations opened, and statistics on how investigations were managed and their disposition by the inspector general related to compliance with the underlying bill. The amendment specifies that the inspectors general should publicly report no less than annually the amendment also sunsets after seven years. Whether or not my colleagues on the other side of the aisle support the underlying Protecting Speech from Government Interference Act, I hope they will support this amendment, as it is vital that the public have an accurate picture of whether the laws that Congress passes are being followed. Public reporting of the number of tips and complaints received and statistics on investigations related to compliance with H.R. 140 is a pro-transparency measure to hold the government accountable that I hope we all can support. This amendment is a common sense and gentle nudge to inspectors general that it is the sense of this body that public reporting related to compliance of this bill is an important endeavor. I urge, my, I urge support of my amendment, and with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I reserve the balance of my time. Does the gentlelady from New Mexico seek recognition for to claim time in opposition to the amendment? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I rise to claim time in opposition to the amendment and yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentlelady is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our inspectors general conduct vital work on behalf of the American people. They help to safeguard taxpayer dollars and government operations from waste, fraud, abuse, and mismanagement, and to investigate what occurs inside of our federal agencies. But to ask them to waste their finite resources and staffing on an annual reporting requirement for a bill that actually threatens the freedom of the American people and the American public and electoral system is gravely antithetical to their missions and their purpose and is itself an act of waste, fraud, abuse, and mismanagement. Nobody could act in good conscience to support this amendment. One of the most concerning aspects of this bill is that it creates a waiting period of at least 72 hours before law enforcement officials can take action to prevent or respond to most crimes or threats they identify, either on or involving social media platforms. So let's imagine you're a federal official, an FBI investigator, and you see information being shared online that indicates that a sexual assault is imminent, some sort of violence is about to occur, there is some sort of election fraud about to occur. Under this bill, you'd have a decision to make. Do you write and file a lengthy report to Congress and then wait 72 hours until it's too late? Or do you act immediately knowing that you might be subject to a $50,000 fine or might be barred from federal service for 10 years because you reported something that has been tagged as censored speech under this bill and amendment? Thanks to the excellent bipartisan work of Congresswoman Houlihan and Congresswoman Mace, we could have been considering a very different kind of amendment out here on the floor today. One that would have made sure that this bill still allowed enforcement officials to act immediately in this exact case. But my Republican colleagues would not allow this amendment to come to the floor today, choosing instead to waste our time and the time and resources of our federal agencies on this amendment. They choose a do-nothing, wasteful reporting requirement over a bipartisan amendment that would protect 
the safety in many instances, even the lives of women and Americans across the country. It's outrageous. I believe that this bill and this amendment are dangerous and I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment and reserve the balance of my time. General lady reserves, the gentleman from Tennessee is recognized. Mr. Chair, I have no further speakers and I'm prepared to close and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from uh, Tennessee reserves, the gentle lady from North New Mexico is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In closing, I just want to note one final time that this bill and its proposition are deeply dangerous. It proposes to actually address free speech and censorship when, in fact, it would hamstring our federal officials. This amendment adds dangerous amendment changes to that bill that would make it even more difficult for our federal officials to do their job. I rise in opposition to the amendment, and I rise in strong opposition to the bill itself. Does the gentlelady yield reserve. back? You reserve? or Reserve. Or, the gentlelady reserves. The gentleman from Tennessee is recognized. Mr. Chair, I yield myself the balance of my time. The gentleman is recognized. By voting yes on Amendment 10, members are reaffirming, reaffirming their commitment to transparency and government accountability. If my amendment passes along with the underlying bill, the American people will be more well informed of violations of the underlying bill. In closing, I urge my members to vote yes on my amendment and the underlying bill. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from Tennessee yields back. And the gentlewoman from New, New Mexico is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think we've well established that not only is the premise of this bill, but many of the requirements in it dangerous for our federal law enforcement, dangerous to our constitutional rights, dangerous to the American people, and dangerous to our national security and our electoral system. And yet the way it is being proposed to the American people is that it will defend their rights and their rights to speak freely under the First Amendment. During our markup of this bill, we talked about gaslighting. Gaslighting is the act of when somebody in authority actually makes you believe you're crazy because the truth of what is occurring is actually the opposite. This bill is a dangerous gaslighting of the American people. We will not stand for it. It is dangerous to our democracy. It is dangerous to our elections. And it is dangerous for the people of this country. And with that, I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. 